And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi kicking off her trip to Asia today with reports that she could touch down in Taiwan within hours. She would be the highest ranking U.S. official to visit the island in 25 years. Her trip sparking backlash in Beijing. For more on the potential impact of the trip, let's bring in Longview Global Managing Director and Senior Policy Analyst to Wardrick McNeil. He's a former advisor to the Obama administration. To Wardrick, always good to see you. I, I, don't to under, you. I don't understand why Pelosi is making this trip at the risk of, of worsening relations between the U.S. and China. Why poke the bear right now? Well, Melissa, it's a good question. I don't think that the speaker quite sees it that way. There are a number of legitimate reasons why a speaker would want to travel to Taiwan, primarily, Melissa, to look at the growing gap between Taiwan's military and the People's Liberation Army, a gap, Melissa, that could, quite frankly, allow for China to unilaterally and militarily determine a Taiwan's future. And it is something that provisions of the Taiwan Relations Act, which the speaker is directly in charge of overseeing, along with her colleagues, to make sure that the administration adheres to and implements that act. Those provisions are designed specifically so that Taiwan would not be compelled uh, to do China's bidding by force. So there are a number of reasons for her to do that. As a principal matter, Melissa, I would say that very few people here in Washington thinks that it's a good idea to give China an effective veto over when and where uh, U.S. citizens or U.S. officials uh, may travel. Although, Eduardo, it, it's Tim, and I, I would just say uh, the, the, the sphere of influence dynamic, which, which we know is um, extremely emotional, and I think there's been all kinds of metaphors used uh, on the you know, bending of the will and playing with fire of 1.4 billion people recently. Um, it, it, do you have to go down this road? And, and I understand that, look, uh, Ms. Pelosi is on tour in Asia, meeting with allies. If anything, the message has been about stable U.S.-China relations and how they are important for the region. Um, I, I guess I'll ask the question a little bit differently. Um, why stop in Taiwan when, in fact, we knew or it would be obvious that this is a very difficult issue? Um, is it partly because China is seen as a, you know, a common enemy politically in this country right now? Um, and if anything, this is political gamesmanship. Yeah, well, I think for Beijing, they can speak for themselves. On the speaker, though, Tim, I do want to stress the importance of understanding firsthand what's happening on the ground. The, the, the PLA, quite frankly, is modernization effort has really pressed Taiwan's ability to make its own decisions about its future. And the Taiwan Relations Act is absolutely clear about what the U.S. would like to see in the cross straits. And it's not a unilateral military change in the status quo. And so I suspect the speaker, uh, looking at that, hearing more and more of China's aggression uh, against Taiwan, uh, thinks that it's time for her uh, to land and to take a look at the situation for herself. Now, Tim, to your point, I do expect that we will see potentially some type of, of military response. And I say response because that's not an attack on Taiwan. Perhaps you'll see incursions in and Taiwan's air defense identification zone. But there's another thing that we should be mindful of, Tim, and that is China has other non-military means to respond, like by targeting U.S. companies with this new anti-foreign sanctions act. And we've seen that happen earlier the year with Raytheon and Lockheed. So we could see a non-military response. But to your point, this is a real serious issue for China, for U.S.-China relations. But, you know, I think the speaker's reasoning for going is legitimate from where I sit. Hey, Eduardo, it's Karen Feinerman. Thanks for being on. So I'm wondering, that, you know, the timing is so curious, given the call that Biden just had with Xi Jinping. Do you think he has given her his blessing to do this and he's sort of flexing his muscles? Or do you think he would rather she weren't, didn't go right now? Well, I mean, there's this thing as the co-equal branch of government, Karen. So I'm not sure that the White House is necessarily pleased uh, with the trip, but uh, certainly it's the speaker's call, given that uh, she leads uh, Congress, a co-equal branch of government. But I suspect uh, the timing is not ideal, uh, to say the least. Dor, always great to get your analysis. Appreciate it. Thank you, Melissa. DeWardrick McNeil, um, you know, DeWardrick brings up a very interesting point in terms of non-military retaliation, which I don't know many people are factoring in, Brian Kelly, in terms of, you know, retaliation against corporations, for instance, which might impact U.S. companies. 
Right. I mean, that, that's what it would be. It would sanction some U.S. Com uh, companies from Nancy Pelosi's district or other leadership districts or something like that. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not a political analyst, but it seems like maybe she, she could probably get the same information with like a Skype call or something and say, hey, you know, is there a big army <laughs> over there? OK, yeah, there's a big army. Great. We got a problem. I, I don't buy that at all. What I do think could be is the news that just came out from D.C. that all of a sudden we're going to let these tariffs go on China. Meanwhile, Pelosi goes over there. It's a little bit of a, you know, this for that, a ah. little bit of a negotiation. We're still holding China's feet to the fire. But you know what? We'll let the tariffs go because we need it. So that sounds more likely to me than she has to oversee the military and count how many people they have. Uh, Guy? BK makes a great point. I mean, you got to believe something's in the works. And listen, I get co-equal branch of government, but it's not that she's going to Rome. I mean, she's going to one of the hot button places in the world right now. So my sense is you had to get clearance or some sort of air cover from the administration. With that said, BK, just I was sitting here like nodding my head when Kayla was talking. I'm like, ah, now this all starts to make sense. You know, we'll sort of pull back the tariffs if you allow Nancy to go there. You can saber rattle if you want, but everything is going to be fine. So problem here, though, is if she doesn't go, we look like we back down. And if she goes full stop, we're sort of in their face. So maybe this is what assuages the concerns on the Chinese front. And just bringing politics back into investing in Chinese stocks, it, it, you know, in the last week or so, we've, there's been formalization that Jack Ma is out at Ant Financial. Yep. He's been seen traveling in Europe, which is, you know, kind of notable because no one had seen him for a long time. The question for investors about investing in China is, is have, have the Chinese authorities gotten what they wanted? Did they, did they, did they absolutely have the show of force in terms of their markets, especially their big tech companies? And does that give them now the ability to say, all right, it's investable again? That's a big debate. Alibaba's been all over the map trading back to 90 after being up near 130. I mean, this has been a roller coaster. It's been a trading stock.